Bill's a, a great tool uh, across any operational environment, and it equally applies within the, the training sphere as well. We have a digital strategy uh, within Tanata, which applies across all of our spheres of, of influence and operations. Hi, my name is Lakshmi Ajay. I'm an associate editor with Stat Media, and today I'm in conversation with Steve Clark. He's the head of global training at Donata. Welcome, Steve. Welcome to this conversation. Thank you for inviting me. I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, you know, about your career. You previously worked in the UN World Food Programs, ICT, Emergency Preparedness and Response Functions, and were a commissioned officer in the UK Royal Navy and have worked in marine engineering before. Yes. Time criticality, preparedness and safety typically characterize all these domains. What are some learnings or best practices that you bring to the training and skill of the modules for Donata? I think it's a, it's a really interesting question, Lakshmi. And I think, I think you're right in terms of all of those domains. One of the common themes is, is really operational competence. In terms of training our personnel in, in whatever sectors that might be, the focus has to be on making sure that they are competent to do the roles that we expect them to be, safe and confident as well. So I think really one of the key focuses, certainly from my, my time in the military, is, is how do we ensure that our personnel achieve that level of operational competence uh, to make sure that they can do what we need them to do. So I think that's one of the key areas that, that we need to focus on. And what I brought into my approach within Donata and the aviation sector is, is that operational competence piece, how we achieve that as efficiently uh, and effectively as, as possible. Obviously, our operational teams need our personnel as quickly as possible, but it's really reinforcing that speed to competence. We need to be agile. We need to be adaptable, but really it is is having the, the systems and processes in place to, to deliver that level of expertise, that excellence that will enable our personnel to deliver what our customers need in the best way possible. Dinata has recently begun construction on a new 20,000 square meter cargo warehouse, which will significantly expand its operations in Erbil International Airport in Iraq. In recent years, Dinata has also made strategic investments in new cargo facilities in London and Manchester, UK, Karachi and Lahore, Brussels, Sydney and Toronto. Furthermore, in January of this year, the business announced a 200 million investment in one of the world's largest and most modern cargo facilities, Dinata Cargo City Amsterdam at Schiphol Airport. Port in the Netherlands. Could you talk about staff augmentation that will be done with respect to these recent investments with this ongoing expansion? How is the company bridging the geographical gap when it comes to training and skilling and ensuring a similar standard and cultural fit prevail across all these facilities? Yeah, absolutely, Lakshmi. I mean, in terms of, of our expansion and our investment within the cargo sphere, uh, I mean, it just points to you know the, the strategy that we have in terms of continually investing in, in excellence uh, and driving forward our, our business plan and our business model for that and providing the solutions that our customers need. Clearly, all of that expansion will require personnel to, to man it. Um, we are, first and foremost, a, a people organization. So in terms of the augmentation, uh, in terms of numbers, I, I can't speak to that. But in terms of the, the training solutions and the training approach that we will have in place, it's the same across all of our business, business lines. It's really making sure that when our personnel get into their operational roles, as, as I mentioned previously, they are competent, confident, safe to do everything that we need them to do. So in terms of that expansion within the cargo sphere, one of the initiatives that Donata has just just completed and introduced is a standard set of, of operational procedures, so a standard set of, of SOPs, uh, in terms of the Donata cargo operating manual, so DCOM, as we call it internally. Uh, so that's, that's a complete set of cargo operations, processes, procedures, in order to ensure that we have that standardized approach and that standardized consistent service to our customers, irrespective of where we, we operate. Part of the DCOM suite of documentation is the training solutions that go along with those operational procedures. Training is there to support operations. It's there to serve the operational need in terms of creating and developing uh, and assuring that competence within our teams. So DCOM is really the driver for that standardization and that consistency across all of our business areas, whether it's in Amsterdam or Iraq or anywhere else where we, we provide those cargo operation facilities. So in terms of that standardized approach, we have that centralized suite of solutions, which will enable us to bridge that gap geographically. So wherever we operate within the world, it will be that standard set. Clearly, there will be localized variations. There may well be regulatory aspects uh, that apply in one country that don't in another. So part of the implementation program with the DCOM solution, with the training solution, is to work for, for my team in the headquarters to work with the local teams to ensure that we incorporate any local specifics, any local regulatory requirements, any cultural considerations that we need to adapt to in order to ensure that all of our personnel 
at whatever level they are, whatever role they're doing, applies the Donata standard in the way that our customers expect. As you may be aware, digitalization and sustainability were two of the mega trends that the air cargo industry witnessed post-pandemic. As the industry embraces more digitalization, can you speak about some key focus areas that you follow when it comes to training and upskilling the employees for air cargo, especially in a digital age? Digital is a great tool uh, across any operational environment, and it equally applies within the, the training sphere as well. We have a digital strategy. Uh, within Tanata, which applies across all of our spheres of, of influence and operations. So we, we really want to exploit technology, exploit digitalization, exploit the, the increases in the pace to, to enable us to maintain that excellence of service that we need for our customers. In terms of the specific areas for, for cargo and for training, we incorporate, we, we implement a lot of standard solutions, you know, learning management systems to, to take advantage of the technology there, digital content in the form of e-learning that people can access wherever they are, whenever they are, on their tablets, on their mobiles, at work, at a desktop, at a laptop. So we have the, the standard approach as well, which is, is really powerful and can really save us a lot of time in terms of that initial aspect of knowledge transfer where we need to, to ensure that all our personnel get the information in terms of our processes and our procedures. Uh, and that's available in, in all of the languages that we need. Clearly, being a global company, we operate in lots of different language yeah. uh, domains, and English is not the first language of, of the vast majority of our personnel. So from a training perspective, we need to address that, and we need to recognize that uh, our solutions need to be available in order that our people can access them and, and engage and really benefit from those learning events that we want to put in place. So having our digital solutions available in those local languages is a crucial element of our strategy. But that's kind of the standard aspects that most of our most organizations will, will incorporate. In terms of what we want to do to really press ahead and, and challenge ourselves to do better, it's looking at how we can exploit new technologies. Virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality, they're not new. They're kind of new within the aviation sector. I know there are a lot of companies exploring these avenues as well, but for us, it's a really key element of, of how we take advantage of those technologies in the digital age. So we have got a really strong strategy uh, in terms of those technologies, using virtual reality to really enhance what we can deliver to our personnel and, and make our training more realistic, as realistic as possible within their environments, which will help us to reduce the training burden. If we can increase their speed to competence, increase the time, uh, or sorry, increase the effectiveness of the training interventions, then they are more competent earlier on uh, within their career and therefore that benefits us operationally and lots of downstream benefits as well. So in terms of the digital aspect, from that perspective, that's a key part of our strategy. But AI is a, a topic of the day, how we how we exploit those avenues, how we exploit personalization in terms of just-in-time training, in terms of reinforcement of training, uh, not leaving it every 36 months as per the regulations, but really expanding our capabilities to provide that, that knowledge, those experiences to our personnel when they need them and tailoring our activities against those objectives as well. So are they already deployed? Or are you exploring these new technologies? Uh, we are piloting them. We have done some work uh, in part of our ground handling business for virtual reality already. Um, that was a, a really effective pilot uh, and we learned a few lessons from, from that delivery. And we're now expanding that across the whole Donata remit in terms of our catering facility, our travel business, cargo and ground handling as well to look at where we can really focus these technologies. I'm a big fan of, of virtual reality. I've used it in, in previous organizations and it can work really well, but it's not as any technology. It's not a one size fits all. We really need to focus our efforts uh, in terms of where we're going to best realize the benefits from this in a particular example, um, but it can be all of the other technologies that, that are coming into the, the learning, the training, the development domain alongside you know, the operational elements as well, you know, digitalization within the operational sphere is a massive area that we need to continue to in invest in um, and investigate and look at where we can best benefit from that. So yeah, so we are using it. We want to use it more, but we need to focus our efforts where it's going to give us the best benefit and where our personnel will get the best benefit from it. Automation is an important part of air cargo now and is making significant inroads into the ground handling and safety mapping and other functions. Uh, I believe Dinata has implemented its one cargo system in Iraq and now we'll roll out the platform globally. One Cargo basically automates key business and operational functions 
functions including safety, quality, monitoring, reporting and ULD management with an integrated cloud-based platform. How is the staff trained to deploy this advanced digital solutions? How many employees will be using it across which centers and are there any more such digital solutions that you, uh, you know, you already answered but if there are any more that you can talk about? I think OneCargo is a great initiative and enhance our capabilities to to manage our cargo activities end-to-end. -end. So from that perspective, it's it's a really welcome addition to Donata's capability. I think, yes, you're right. You mentioned Iraq. It's also already been deployed in a number of our other locations but will go global um, by the end of the air. I think in terms of the training approach for our personnel and initiative that we have, um, but that our approach across all of our training requirements is, is pretty much the same. How do we make sure our personnel are confident and safe in using whatever tools they need to, to achieve our business outcomes, which ultimately is to provide better services to our, to our customers and our clients. So I think in terms of One Cargo, we did put a particular project in place to address the training needs uh, in line with our operational SMEs. And it was part of a blended solution. We developed digital solutions for some of that initial knowledge transfer, but crucially it was looking at the system as a whole from a practical perspective and making sure that the practical application of the new system was part of the training program in place so that when our personnel go fully operational, we are confident that they know how to operate the system. They know where the benefits are, they know what to do in some non-standard situations, um, but they, they are really confident in using the system. As it would be if any new operational environment, came, if we had a new piece of GSE or a, a, a new operational procedure, it's, it's the same approach. We implement the solution, it's blended, it's effective, it's efficient, it makes sure our personnel can do what we need them to do. Right. Pivoting off your response to this question, you know, confidence about operations. Pharma and perishables are important sectors uh, for the air cargo sector, more so after the global coronavirus pandemic. What are some of the ways Dinata trains its staff when it comes to training to handle these verticals? Are there any specific modules or tests that they have to undergo to be able to work in these verticals? I mean, our key driver is that whatever role our personnel do, they are competent to do that. They've gone through the requisite training. They've been assessed as, as competent against all of the knowledge base aspects uh, and the practical applications. In terms of farming, you're absolutely right. Um, and I think the importance of this really came into light during the pandemic with you know the, the obvious increase in transport of vaccines. And that's something that the, the industry had to really yeah. adapt to, yeah. gear up for, absolutely, um, and be agile in their response. I think it's a crucial element that we need to, to maintain awareness of and keep abreast of. In terms of specifics, uh, we don't have a core specific solution because we don't employ that across our global business. But where we do have personnel involved in the handling of pharma uh, and perishables, absolutely go through the specific training events and training activities and training assessments to ensure that they are uh, at the required level and they can do what we need them to do. As an example, our team in Belgium are CEIV uh, certified by IATA um, as capable of, of handling pharma uh, and all the perishable aspects for that. And they went through the specific IATA transporting, sorry, temperature controlled regulation training um, and transporting goods in temperature controlled vehicles and, and cargo. So that's one of the things that we want to really drive towards where we have those specific requirements in whatever sphere it might be. And if we want to be uh, industry leaders and adopt those best practices, then we are with that IR certifications available, then we will adopt that where it's where there is the business need to do that. Uh, and certainly the specific training to, to enable our personnel to do what we need them to do. Is there anything specific that you do for transportation of dangerous goods, you know, because the industry is beset with problems related to misdeclaration, underdeclaration, and, you know, personnel are very key to this operation. Absolutely. So anything in specific that you do? I think dangerous goods is, is a key topic, a key topic of, of the World Cargo Symposium. Obviously, the shift uh, to the CBTA approach, the competency-based training and assessment that came into effect uh, 1st of January of this year, is a key focus of a lot of industry stakeholders. That is something that we take very seriously. And as part of that introduction of CBTA, uh, which is a great initiative, and I think it's it's definitely helped us to focus, or the industry to focus on that development, development and assurance of competence, um, which I spoke about earlier. From a Donata perspective, it really gave us the opportunity to look at what we needed to deliver, what our requirements were, what our operational uh, needs are, what our personnel are actually doing um, on the ground in terms of processing, accepting, identifying, preparing, packaging, all of those dangerous goods aspects and the differences that we need to, to factor into that. So it really enabled us to bring in our 
DG SMEs from across the business, break apart what we needed, and then put it back together in a really effective modular plan for delivery. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. We're integrating that within our normal training life cycles, um, going through the regulatory requirements with the uh, with the relevant aviation authorities, mm-hmm. having that certify IATA as best practice, uh, and implementing it from that perspective. So again, moving the, the training from not just in the classroom from the theory, but really ensuring that the practical application of that knowledge specifically with that, with regard to dangerous goods is there and that our personnel are confident and competent to do whatever role they have within the dangerous goods uh, pipeline. Because you're right, it, it's a crucial element and vital that we get it right. Yeah. Last year, I saw the aviation sector struggle with labor issues in many parts of the world, owing to wages, poor working conditions and lifestyles and lack of incentives. The pandemic also contributed to a lot of talent leaving the industry as flights globally were grounded in 2020. What would be your take on how to attract and retain talent in the aviation sector going forward? And what kind of policies do you think can sort of mitigate, uh, you know, in retention and career growth in this sector? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. I mean, we spoke briefly at the start. Donata is and will remain a people organization. You know, we've, we're focused on, on our personnel. We're focused on investing in, in their development and ensuring that they have the working environment that they should rightly expect. I think in terms of attraction and retention, there are things that we can do as individual organizations. There are things that we can do as, as an industry body as a whole. So if I deal with those kind of separately, if that's yeah. okay, I think individually as an organization to attract talent. We need to set ourselves up as an employer of choice. And that's certainly uh, Donata's focus in terms of attracting the right people into our, our organization. And that stems from a lot of different things, primarily our values. You know, it, Are we an organization that people want to be part of, take pride in being part of? And that's certainly what we strive to be and what we continue to challenge ourselves to, to be better at. Uh, and I think that's something that is really important for for our people. Um, are they proud of being part of Donata? Uh, and I think our values really drive towards that. You know, we, we talked briefly about environment and sustainability. We talked about culture in terms of you know the leadership culture that we have, the operational culture that we have. And all of our strategies drive towards improving those aspects of, of our business, challenging ourselves continually to mm-hmm. to be better and to, to be the organization that people want to join and, and be a part of. And I think I think we're on the right track with that. In terms of policies, anything that, uh, you know, the industry as a whole can, you know, uh, put in focus to ensure that the talent is retained and there is also attraction of new talent. I think it's it's setting the industry up to be attractive, to be a career. You know, the ground handling industry is is, is hard. The working conditions are challenging, um, but we should set up ourselves up to be professionally attractive. And I think there are things, you know, I, I'm part of the IATA training team as part of the ground operation standards teams. So I think... What we can do and some of the initiatives that we're, we're looking at is how we make the industry more professionally attractive. How do we invest in our personnel from a, a training perspective to make sure that it is at the standard that they need? Uh, and how can we coordinate that across the industry? You know, Things like maybe a training passport. So if you work in one organization and you achieve a standard, um, how do you translate that into potentially a different organization depending on you know, contracts are, are always uh, changing and people may want to move geographically. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure that they can take their professional status with them? So that's an area that we're looking at within the IATA team, um, how we develop such a training passport, uh, all the policies and processes that go with that. Obviously, there are challenges associated, um, but that's an initiative that we can work with. In terms of retaining talent, um, certainly within Donata, we have a very robust talent framework, talent management framework, where we can identify talent and work to maximize the potential of of our personnel. We have a a very robust strategy in terms of of individual personal and professional development, investing in training, both professional, functional, operational training, but also soft skills, how people expand their own capability to realize their own potential. So I think initiatives such as this are really key. The the expectations of, of the workforce has have changed irrevocably since the pandemic. As an industry, as an organization, we need to be aware of that. We need to adapt to that. And we need to recognize um, that we need to invest in our personnel. We do. Uh, we have those frameworks in place, but we need to continually look at, at what we can do to improve those uh, prospects, the, the potential of our personnel within our organization. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for this conversation. My pleasure.